10 Hezbollah terrorists have been eliminated in a series of targeted countermeasures in Lebanon by the IDF over the last 24 hours as the preparations for a ground operation into Rafah have begun. The IDF is starting to isolate the city and made preparations to evacuate the civilian population. This leaves us with questions about how Israel will eliminate the leadership of Hamas. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel at the 174th day of the war against Hamas and Hezbollah. The Air Force carried out extensive attacks on two different locations in the Nakura region of southern Lebanon in the last 24 hours. The IDF spokespersons unit confirmed that fighter jets eliminated a squad of terrorists who were staying in a Hezbollah structure in the villages of Tir Harfa and the area of the village of Anakura in southern Lebanon. At least 10 Hezbollah terrorists were reportedly eliminated in the two attacks. This followed a serious escalation in rockets attacks by Hezbollah into Israel, with over a hundred rockets being fired in the last two days. One of those rockets scored a direct hit on a factory in the city of Kiryat Shmona, killing Zahar Bashara, a 35-year-old resident of the nearby Druze village of Ein Kania. However, despite the uptick in Hezbollah rocket attacks, the organization has been severely weakened by the IDF in recent months. Please continue to support us, click the follow button and help us spread the truth by subscribing to our YouTube channel. And also share us with your friends on social media. And the most important thing is to keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Despite diplomatic signals of opposition to the move, the IDF is continuing with preparations for a ground incursion into the southern Gazan city of Rafah. IDF units have moved to encircle the city and isolate it from the rest of the Gaza Strip, even as negotiations over the return of the Israeli hostages that were abducted on October 7th appear to be going nowhere. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant is also in Washington DC, coordinating the military action with his counterparts in the United States Department of Defense. To clarify, the official American position is that they recognize that it is necessary to act against Hamas. They certainly recognize that Israel has the right to do so, and it is clear to America that Hamas still poses a real threat. The American administration knows that there are Hamas terrorists in Rafah, and they have said more than once that they completely understand the need to fight Hamas. However, the Americans are unconvinced that the IDF can carry out this ground operation in Rafah and destroy the remaining Hamas formations without doing unacceptable damage to the civilian population. That is where the reluctance to accept the Israeli plans come from. That is why together we must spread the truth and remind everyone in the world who Hamas is and the terrible danger that these Islamic extremist organizations pose to the entire world, not just Israel. With that in mind, let us take a moment to revisit the IDF operation in the Shifa hospital in Gaza City over recent days, because this might have been the most important operation of the entire war. Last week, the IDF carried out a surprise raid on the Shifa hospital in Gaza and revealed that many terrorists were entrenched inside the hospital building and even in the emergency room. Despite Hamas's attempts to obscure the importance of the incident, now even the terrorist organizations in Gaza admit 
the magnitude of the infiltration cannot be underestimated. A Hamas official was quoted in the Hezbollah-affiliated Lebanese newspaper El Akbar this week, saying that no one can underestimate the size of the infiltration carried out by the Israeli army in Shifa hospital, nor underestimate the high level of the people who were arrested or neutralized. The figure refused to be identified by name, but these words speak for themselves and testify to the IDF's successes in the operation. The Hamas official quoted in the report continued by saying the nerve center of Hamas is still fine and all the current losses can be observed. But I can tell you that this is the talk of a coward who is trying to bluff his way out of a catastrophe. The undeniable truth is that the IDF arrested about 500 terrorists at the Shifa hospital and seized massive amounts of intelligence materials along with the usual stockpiles of weapons and ammunition we find everywhere in the Gaza Strip. This treasure trove of information about Hamas abilities, personnel, the locations of their bases and tunnel networks, and above all, their plans for the future, are already enabling the IDF to operate even more effectively against them. It is important to point out that even when the IDF was acting against terrorists in the Shifa hospital, it was also building a medical complex near the Shifa hospital to treat Palestinians into which trucks with medical equipment, food and water were brought, while in continuous communication with the Directorate of Coordination and Liaison to the Gaza Strip. However, in the Palestinian and Arab media, the operation in Shifa is being followed closely and the narrative they're broadcasting to the world is very different from this truth that I have just told you. The words heavy shelling are often heard in these reports along with stories about smoke coming out of the windows of the hospitals, sounds of heavy gunfire and so on. These reports are attempting to convince the world that the IDF has gone into this hospital with guns blazing, determined to wipe out anyone who tries to stop them, and totally indifferent to the harm being done to the uninvolved civilians. These false narratives don't surprise us, of course, as they tell us what we already knew. Hamas desperately wants to downplay the damage they've sustained at the Shifa hospital. They want to talk endlessly about how Israel is out of control to send military forces into a hospital to distract attention from the fact that they did the same thing, deliberately using this civilian facility and the patients trying to get treated there as human shields for their terrorist activities. Meanwhile, the IDF launched a special operation yesterday in Khan Yunis, and in fact, surrounded the El Amal hospital complex. Five months into the war and after prolonged activity in the various cities in the Gaza Strip, the IDF recognizes the fact that Hamas terrorists are using the medical and humanitarian infrastructure in the Gaza Strip in order to regroup, reorganize and continue to carry out attacks against Israel. The reasons are obvious. Unlike underground tunnels, where it is dark, cold, and maybe hard to breathe, as well as being physically cut off from the action of the surface. These hospitals offer the terrorists a place to breathe easily, relax, and take a look around. A hospital is a much more comfortable place to plan a terrorist attack, as it has the running water, internet connections, kitchen facilities, windows through which sunshine comes, and many other advantages over a tunnel. I can tell you firsthand, tunnels in the Gaza Strip are not a place you want to stay in for long. Additionally, a hospital won't be bombed by the Israeli Air Force the way a tunnel entrance will be, because a hospital is filled with civilians who the Hamas terrorists can use as human shields. With all of this in mind, it is very important that we get the truth out to the world about what is going on in the Gaza Strip. Israel and the surrounding region. Please help us by sharing our videos on YouTube, subscribing to this channel and following us on social media. If you do want to support our work and help us create more videos 
from Israel about the situation, please consider supporting us financially by going to our website at www.tbn.org Israel. You can see the link below. Another way is to donate through this YouTube channel directly. Thank you. To conclude, Hamas is focused on surviving until the summer when the US election campaign begins and support and interest in Israel will probably fade. The diplomatic pressure is growing on Israel to reach some kind of ceasefire agreement that allows Hamas to stay intact, which will allow it to regroup and prepare for another war with Israel. This is the long-term strategic goal of Hamas and their Iranian patrons at this point. These plans were dealt a very severe setback. Hamas has sustained tremendous damage and no longer operates as an army. Most of its best, most highly trained units have been decimated and have no central command and control. The survivors are operating, if at all, as a small cell doing what they think they need to do as best they can with whatever they can find, but there is no control center that can move units around. They are in very bad shape, but in some ways that just makes them even more dangerous. They have reverted to the old style of guerrilla warfare, and with that come some advantages for the terrorist organization. They don't need the infrastructure and facilities of a large armed formation. They can just go from a house to another house, hide, fire some kind of weapon at the IDF troops, and then disappear. However, it must also be said that many of them have surrendered, having lost the motivation to fight. Maybe that means there is some hope for a peaceful future. In any case, Israeli intelligence sources said that the central command of Hamas no longer has a clear picture of what is happening with the rest of its fighters in Gaza while being buried deep underground in the network of tunnels. Their intelligence is very limited. They don't have surveillance cameras anymore like they used to before the start of the war. So the overall picture is very, very limited, said an Israeli intelligence source. Even those terrorists who are operating above ground are constantly on the move. You don't really see these large orchestrated attacks on Israel like we saw at the beginning of the war when we entered the Gaza Strip. Israel needs to do something dramatic and drastic to change the momentum of the climate, said the source. We have to enter Rafah one way or another. And so we here at TBN Israel will remain on the job continuing to update you on developments as they arise. Please stay tuned for the latest episode of My State, which will be posted this weekend. This time, we will go together to the Jewish ultra-Orthodox neighborhood of Mashiarim to understand how we are still in a 3,000-year conflict with Iran. Continue together to pray for the peace of Israel, follow and share the truth, and most importantly, Join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem, as this is a spiritual war between good and evil. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.